This week on The Stampede, a profile of SMU quarterback Garrett Gilbert. Any way you can win is the best way to win. And so that's, to me, that's all that matters. Tailgating at the new Corral on the Boulevard. The Corral's awesome, it's, bad. it's the best, it's fantastic. And the battle for the iron skillet comes to Ford Stadium. Pressure, Marcus Hunt with a sack for the far side. The most interesting newcomer on the hilltop this year is quarterback Garrett Gilbert. Gilbert looks to throw right sideline. It's caught Keenan Holman at the 10. Touchdown, SMU. He was born to be a quarterback. His father, Gale, played eight seasons in the NFL. <laughs> Coming out of high school, Garrett was the Gatorade and Parade National Player of the Year. After three years at the University of Texas, he completed his undergraduate degree in sports management and transferred to SMU. He has two seasons of eligibility remaining. SMU seemed like a great fit. Coach Jones getting to come up here and take a visit. I really liked the program. I really liked seeing the campus. I, I really liked the guys when I first got to meet him. It, uh, it, it just seemed like a great environment and a great atmosphere and the program on the rise, something that I felt like I wanted to be a part of. Everything pointed here, and the decision was, was actually pretty easy. All right. Let's go 90-14 pump wide post. He's got a real nice arm, uh, and, he, and he does have some mobility uh, to him, and he's a very competitive kid. Um, you know, those things will uh, come forth as he gets more comfortable in what we're doing. June Jones and quarterback coach Dan Morrison are Gilbert's principal tutors, but Gilbert also relies on the experience of graduate assistant Timmy Chang, who rewrote the NCAA record book when he played for Jones at Hawaii. Timmy's one of the most prolific passers in NCAA history. He has a lot of knowledge about the game as well, and specifically about this offense, which creates, you know, it creates an opportunity to learn quite a bit. I'm kind of there wherever, uh, wherever he needs me. Um, or wherever the coaches need me. During the games, I'm on the sideline, uh, you know, helping him out in his ear, you know, asking him what he's seen when he comes off, uh, what he feels comfortable, you know, what he saw in that play or that coverage, and we just talk about coverage and things like that. And, you know, I'll just give him, you know, a second thought of, of what, I, what I saw and, you know, try to help him there. Let's go, Garrett! Through three games, he's completed 76 of 144 passes for 694 yards. He has three touchdowns, but has thrown four picks. Empty backfield and almost it is picked off on the deflection. Well, it's always hard when you have a new quarterback and you got new positions. We got a lot of new players at key spots. You, you can go right down pretty much any team that that replaces uh, quarterbacks uh, are not very consistent. Good throw. You're all right. Good throw. Garrett's You're living right. uh, through some of the things that first uh, year players in the system go through, and that's so you got to live with those mistakes. Yeah, Johnson's got it. Touchdown. It takes time to master the intricacies of the run and shoot. The passing attack relies on timing and accurate reads. Gilbert is a fast learner, but he's still very much a work in progress. For a guy that just came in, during the summer to just pick up the offense and go with it. I mean, that's kind of impressive. It usually takes maybe about a year or so for you to be as comfortable and productive. He's just going to continue to grow and get more experience under his belt. It's one thing to do it in practice, but you got to do it in a game and you got to live through the games. You got to go through the adversity. You got to, you know, bite your bullets and just go and produce. I see a free man, so I know where to go. I yeah, mean, I see the free man in my face with my regular defender. Right. I feel like each day, if not each week, I am just taking huge steps towards towards becoming a better player, towards becoming a better quarterback, and towards becoming a better student of the game. Gilbert has been a Mustang for just two months, but he's already emerged as one of the team leaders. Garrett brings, you know, a toughness. Uh, he, he's obviously a very solid quarterback, but um, even off the field, he's a solid, got solid character. Uh, he's the right guy for that position. You know, he, he does the things that Coach Jones wants done, and he does what the team needs. Garrett Gilbert is just, you know, he he stays, uh, he keeps his composure at all times. So he's a great guy, great quarterback. 
And Gilbert with man-to-man -man coverage on a jump ball. Touchdown SMU. SMU's offense has yet to hit on all cylinders. Third down efficiency is just 35.3%, which ranks ninth in Conference USA. If the Mustangs are to win consistently, the passing game will need more explosiveness and consistency. I feel fortunate to be here and have this opportunity to play in this offense. Every quarterback wants to throw the ball this much and, and have the ball in their hands every snap. Obviously, any way you can win is the best way to win. And so that's, to me, that's all that matters. Still ahead, preparations for TCU. Nice throw. And even a driving rainstorm can't stop the party on the boulevard. Frog legs, everybody loves to eat frog legs. This is Iron Skillet Week on the Hilltop. Time to go head-to-head -head with the arch-rival TCU Horn Frogs. How big is this game? On Tuesday night, the fan on TX21 airs live from Ford Stadium. We're excited to get to be on TV anytime we can, and so especially for this week, previewing TCU SMU game here at Ford. I'm um, looking forward to that, and so as much word and as much exposure as we can get out before this game, we like it. Go Red, go Blue, SMU! Go Red, go Blue, SMU! Well, any publicity is good publicity. You know, it just, that's, you know, you can't buy that kind of exposure for the school. I think all those, uh, all these things are positive uh, things. You get your, your uh, SMU on television, that's what it's about. A bye week gave the Mustangs a chance to get healthy. Now it's time to prepare for 15th ranked TCU. Garrett, remember on 11, on Navy and Army, he's going to go pivot, okay? Good throw, 11. That's why you take care of the ball. If you go Army, it'd be. Normal split. You got uh, levels on the back side. Right? Okay. Well, I was just saying, you, you want the levels or you want the tech too? Oh, uh, no, we want the levels. Yeah. Nice throw. Through three games, the team stands at one and two. Hand off Zach Line. Going right to the end zone. Touchdown, SMU. There have been bright spots. The play of Zach Line. Bo Barnes with some pressure, and it's an interception. Kenneth Acker picks this one off the 30. The shutout of Stephen F. Austin. One man to beat to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Kenneth Acker, second touchdown of the night. But the team is yet to put together a complete game on both sides of the ball. We're not in any panic mode, so to speak. We uh, have confidence in each uh, each and every member on this team, both sides of the ball, whether it be special teams, offensively and defensively. So like I said, just uh, look at the film, learn from our mistakes, and uh, just have a positive attitude. Just take it uh, one day at a time and just get better, and um, I think we'll be right on track where we need to be. We are not giving up yet. There's only three games behind us, and uh, the season is far from being over. So we have to just keep our heads up and uh, keep focused, keep positive, and that's the mo most important thing. The kids aren't going to have any trouble getting up for TCU. Uh, that's one of those games that uh, you don't have to worry about a Newt Rockney speech before the game or anything like that. They're going to be ready to play. Friday night, as is tradition, Mustangs check into a local hotel. <laughs> Someone always takes mine. What's up, y'all? Welcome to my crib. This is where Billy and Dougal, Zach Lyons stay. Uh, as you can see, Billy Dougal is always in the shower. This is kind of his thing. So uh, he'll be in there till Saturday at 6. Come on in. You can see we nicely have our beds made. You know, we like to keep things clean. Got a nice throw couch over here with the pillows. What's up, everyone? Welcome to our crib, our hotel room. Take a little look in the bathroom first. We got not much here, but a little complimentary toothpaste. Not too bad. Um, got my roommate's stuff here and my stuff's in that one, so I'll move on into the bed, in the bedrooms. And walk, chilling in bed. How's it going? Gotta keep comfy in the beds. Beds are A1, can't complain. We like to keep it cold, so we lower the AC down to 60 each and every week. First thing we do when we get in here, 
head right over to the thermostat. As you can see over here, we got this nice view. Uh, we got the driving range out here. Me and Billy like to go out there and hit some balls. We can set up a camera here and check our technique later. Got the fridge, hopefully we'll load it up with some ice cream later tonight. Ice cream and uh, M&M's, get a little snack going late at night. Uh, let's see, got the uh, BYU game going on right now, tomorrow. Hopefully we'll watch the Ryder Cup and a little bit of, uh, little bit of college football action. Well that's all we got here. I don't care where you go, which can't stay here. So now you've seen our crib, now you've seen our room. I think it's time for you guys to head out. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, here for the plus area. After dinner, the players meet to review assignments for TCU. We should be able to get that guy for sure, left tackle, right? Head coach June Jones runs the session for the offense. So I was talking today about the uh, Y corner on the X whip. See how you got to break it flat right there, uh, Jeremy? He's kind of high, right? So just break it. If he broke it flat right there on the five yard line, we'll catch it, get out of bounds. When we come back, it's SMU versus TCU with the iron skillet on the line. Boulevard has become one of the top tailgating spots in the country. Despite a steady downpour, Pony fans still turn out for their game day parties. Woo! Wonderful day to be out here tailgating at SMU. Hopefully it's going to be a really good game and SMU is going to put up a great fight. From the food and drink to the style and traditions, no one does tailgating quite like the Mustangs. The editors of Southern Living Magazine named SMU one of the top 20 tailgating parties in the South. This week, many tents are serving up a favorite Mustang delicacy. We eat frog legs for lunch. Frog legs, everybody loves to eat frog legs. This year, SMU has added a new attraction, the corral. The crowd's awesome, it's, bad. it's the best, it's fantastic. A little bit of rain never stopped anybody from having fun. Open to any fan with a game ticket, the crowd boasts a wide array of game day favorites, all delivered in air-conditioned comfort. The corral's great, it's a new addition this year, uh, particularly on a day like today when the weather's less than perfect, it's great to be able to come in here and, and uh, meet up with some other Mustang fans and stay a little bit dry while we're getting ready for the game. Inside Ford Stadium, the mood is quite different. The Mustangs go through their routines in an efficient, business-like manner as the clock winds down to kickoff. Marcus Hunt loosens up in the weight room. And Garrett Gilbert warms up with a dry ball. Rain, rain, rain. It will be interesting to see how that affects the game plan for both teams, especially for the pass attack of SMU. Since SMU beat the Horned Frogs last year in Fort Worth, TCU has won 11 in a row. Quarterback Casey Polka leads the nation in passing efficiency. TCU also leads the nation in scoring defense, surrendering only a little over four points per game. Not surprisingly, the Horned Frogs are favored by 17 points. Nothing needs to be said. Play the game for 60 minutes. It's going to be all the way to the end. Take care of the football. Weather condition doesn't matter. Play harder, faster, quicker than they play. All right, let's get a break right there on T. Let's go. The first quarter is dominated by the rain as both teams struggle with the wet field and slick ball. 
Martin, Zach Line handoff right. Balls pops out of his hands. It's loose going far side. TCU after it. Let's see if they covered it before going out of bounds. And they did. Paul Hall looking across the middle. It's going to be caught spinning into the end zone. Touchdown, Ladarius Brown. First and 10 on the 48. Gilbert rolls out right on play action. It's intercepted. Picked off by Olabode at the 40. Running left, 45, 50. Back up the right, the left hash to the 40, to the 30, to the 20. Gilbert takes a shot at him at the 10, and Gary Gilbert will tackle him at the 8-yard line. Elisha Olabo, the junior safety out of Cedar Hill High School with a pick, and he runs it all the way back to the SMU 8. Do whatever you got to do to get back to the ball. That's all I'm saying. Make sacrifices for that. All right? Make confidence. Let's go. And a handoff goes to Andre Dean. No, it's a rollout for the right for Casey Paul Touchdown. They faked the handoff to the tailback, Andre Dean, and they had Tucker lined up at a fullback. He runs a route out on the right side of the end zone at a touchdown pass. In the second quarter, Zach Line puts SMU on the board with a 21-yard touchdown run that belongs on the highlight wheels. From the shotgun, handoff, Zach Line has a hold to the 20, bouncing, yeah. running backwards to the 15, makes a tackle to the 10, to the 5, yeah. touchdown, SMU! Zach Line was spun around, running backwards at the 15, and he kept his feet moving, and he carries it in for his third touchdown of the year. Nice run for Zach Line. Big plays on special teams can decide games. TCU Sky Dawson returns an SMU punt 64 yards. To the 35, 40, breaks one to the 50, to the 40, right sideline to the 30, to the 20. He cuts inside of the 10. He's going to be tackled from behind. Ball comes loose. TCU picks it up in the end zone afterwards. They're spotting him down at the four-yard line, and, and I believe that's Zach Lyon who makes the tackle down there and saves the touchdown for the moment. The Horn Frog offense puts six on the board. Going left to the two, and touchdown, Lanier Sanders. Take care of our business. Throw the ball, catch the ball, do your assignment, and when the whistle blows, we move on. Chase Hover adds a field goal with 29 seconds left in the half. The score is TCU 21, SMU 10 at the half. Hey, uh, Darius Johnson and Jeremy, on, the, uh, on those ones where we're two by two, when, when uh, that guy's coming, what's he doing? Kicking down? He is? But he's head up on you, or where is he? Okay. Head up to outside. Head up to outside? Okay. So, so the Z fade right there. You just got to decide whether you got it or not, quarterback. For the inside backers have got to stay deep because in that zone play, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get it back to the C gap, especially in 12 personnel. All right, so they'll run that zone play, and it's coming all the way back here. Everything is just like we said. This is our house. Play 60 minutes. Play each play longer than them. Be disciplined. Do not get any personal fouls. Do not get personal fouls. Let's finish this game. Let's get out of here with the win and send these guys home. Let's get a break on Marcus. Still ahead, more rain, more football, more drama. In this year's battle for the iron skillet, SMU's star of the game is the defense. Paul Hall from a shotgun. Pressure, Marcus Hunt with a sack for the far side. Two weeks in a row with a sack for the big man out of Estonia. Good job, well done, good job. Kevin. Good good job. The Mustangs hold the Horned Frogs to just 54 yards rushing on 47 carries. That's just 1.15 yards per run. Coming into the game, TCU quarterback Casey Pockhall led the nation in passing efficiency. The Mustangs limit him to 10 completions on 26 attempts for just 107 yards. With 14 minutes to go, TCU leads 24 to 10. The Mustangs need a big play, and at last they get one. Once again, it goes through the punter's hands. It's down at the 12-yard line. The Mustangs mow him down at the 8. The ball Score. went right through Ethan Perry's hands. Now the SMU is up with the football and running it back down to the 1-yard line. <laughs> Let's go strong right, boot right. But unfortunately, the Ponies can't turn the takeaway into points. Looking, firing into the end zone, and it's knocked away. 
With a little over two minutes to go in the game, TCU has the ball fourth and long at the SMU 43. Low snap bounces past it. Perry scrambling for it, and the Mustangs are going to tackle him. And 2.22 to go. Down by two touchdowns. Gilbert looks left, fires that way. It's going to be caught by uh, Derek Thompson. Breaks the tackle, the go. 20, the 10, dies for the pylon. Touchdown, SMU! <laughs> SMU gets one more possession, but Garrett Gilbert's desperation heave is picked off. It'll be intercepted at the five-yard line to end the game. Hey, you guys good luck next week, I would say. Okay. Final score, TCU 24, SMU Mustangs 16. Obviously, we didn't play all phases of the game well enough. I know one thing, that the adversity, all the stuff we're going through right now is going to make us a bowl team before this year is over, okay? But everybody's got to hang together, and it takes special teams, defense, and offense. Even the way we played offensively, we had two chances to tie the game. Two chances. And it wasn't, it wasn't our best effort by the log mark. Like every game we've had this year that we've lost, we've had more than enough opportunities to take the game. And, um, we just haven't executed on all, you know, on all levels. You know, I take some fault, and I fumbled earlier in the game against this team, and you can't have that. Too bad the weather was like this, you know, man. Uh, we didn't, we didn't step up like we were supposed to. Offense didn't get it done. Defense played a good game, and next time we gotta come out and fight harder. As ugly as the game was, you uh, had opportunities to win the game, but you know, obviously we didn't make the plays to do that. The Ponies fall to one and three. All losses coming to BCS schools. Conference USA play begins Saturday as the Ponies travel to El Paso for a game with UTEP. Tickets to SMU's remaining home games against Houston on Thursday, October 18th. Homecoming is the 27th against Memphis, followed by Southern Miss on November 10th and Tulsa on November 24th. For tickets, call 214-SMU-GAME. That's 214-SMU-GAME. Or log on to smumustangs.com.